If you've been in the market for some RGB fans, you've probably come across these Thermaltake Ring Plus 14 or 12 fans. They look absolutely amazing in person. Um, video truly can't describe it. But you simply would not believe how frustrating these little boogers are to get set up and running, especially if you're using Ryzen. There are some huge issues in the software for getting these fans up and running. Um, for instance, I had everything plugged in and it was another hour before I got these fans to actually change color. So to save you guys an hour of headaches and struggles and searching all this stuff on the internet, I'm just gonna show you all how to get it right the first time. So to quickly go over what's in the box, this isn't a full unboxing, just a quick overview to make sure that you've got everything plugged in the right way like you're supposed to. In the box, we of course have our three fans and a controller, but there's more cables than you would actually think you need. So you've got your three fans there, you've got that big fat controller. You have three cables in this package, but you only need two of them to get up and running. So here on your controller, typically you only see those three slots, I assume because it only comes with three fans, but if you rotate it 180 degrees, you will see the other two so that you can hook up five fans per controller. If you're using multiple controllers, then you have to mess with the dip switches. Think of it basically as binary if you've ever done that before. The controller that shows up as one is like this. Controller two is if you move up the dip switch on the far left. And if you just look at the instruction manual that comes with it, it's all there. In terms of cables that you need plugged into this, you have a four pin power connector that uses something that looks a lot like a floppy connector. This is what powers the controller. And it goes here, kind of next to the dip switches. And then you have to plug it in via USB, which is next to this other four pin connector. If you wanted to daisy chain the controllers, that's what you would use this cable for that goes to a USB micro B. Now, if you just want to use this bigger, fatter cable that splits from a USB header into two micro B connectors, you can just do that. Plug one into this controller and one into the other controller, and then you don't have to daisy chain it. So you may think that that's all it takes to get this hooked up. Well, ideally it would be, but if you have Ryzen, you have to find the right USB port. The very first mistake I made is that I used Google to search for Ring Plus Premium RGB Control Software, which did get me the right download if I had bought the other kind of fan, which I didn't. So the software, of course, couldn't detect anything. And I tried a bunch of different USB headers. I tried going through a USB header hub and all that fancy stuff, and still no success. I had to resort to the instruction manual, which as a man, I will admit, did hurt my ego just a little bit. But looking at the manual, I found the correct name for the software. I just had one adjective too many. Finally got the right program installed and looking at task manager, trying to figure out why the program would not start, it would only load up two to five megabytes of RAM, depending on how lucky I happened to be on that reboot of the computer. Bottom line, the software could not launch with the fans plugged in. With the computer on, if I unplugged the controller, sure, the software would load up just fine and say that it couldn't find any controllers. Super annoying. After doing a lot of internet searching, I found out that the problem is with Ryzen and going through the chipset to access USB ports. So what I did is I unplugged it from the USB header and plugged it into a USB 2 port on the front of the case, which fixed nothing. So then I tried a USB 3 port on the case, which did nothing. 
I then tried a USB 2 port at the back of the motherboard, which, as you guessed it, did nothing. And then finally, I found two USB 3 ports on the back of this motherboard, which is the MSI X370 Titanium, which finally worked with the fan controller. I don't know if it's because those USB 3 ports happened to bypass the chipset, which I kind of doubt, but hey, I'm not going to complain because it finally works after almost an hour of just trying different USB ports and rebooting a bunch of times. Super annoying. Other people who have tried this from the few searches I found on forums seem to complain mostly about the X370 Aorus gaming board from Gigabyte. Um, one person said that he couldn't find any USB ports that worked at all. Um, other people have said that they are trying to get refunds and that the software is to blame and that it's been months since the developers have said anything about getting the software patched. But if you have an MSI board, or I believe the ASUS Crosshair Hero, you should be fine. Should. To summarize, yes, the fans work, and yes, they look great, even if they are a bit on the expensive side. Is it worth the hassle? Honestly, probably not. I'm glad that they're in the system now, but if I had known it was going to be this much work, I probably wouldn't have done it. At least I got to make a video out of it, but still. So hopefully this video saves you a lot of the headache and trouble that I had to go through if you're trying to troubleshoot why these fans aren't being recognized by the software or why the software is not loading in the first place. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to check out some of our previous videos. Make sure you're subscribed. And as always, we will see you in the next one. Of all the different color schemes, I have to say, my favorite is probably Red, White, and Freedom. 